The next uninformed search method we look at is depth first search, which is similar to breadth first search, except that instead of expanding the shallowest unexpanded node, we instead expand the deepest unexpanded node. Now, with depth first search, it's very important that we avoid repeated states along a path, because otherwise we could end up just going back and forth between Arad and Zerint, or in a cycle, and not explore anywhere else. So when we get to here, we should notice that Arad has already occurred along this path, so we don't expand that, and instead we expand Aradia. But a better way to think about depth first search is to imagine that you're actually physically walking around in the space. So we expand Arad, and then Zerind, and then Aradia, and then Sibiu, and perhaps back to Arad, but then we realize that this has already occurred along the path, so we backtrack to CBU. It helps if we also imagine that we're unwinding a ball of string or thread as we move through the maze. This idea goes back to Greek mythology where Ariadne held the end of the string and Theseus unwound it as he explored the labyrinth looking for the Minotaur. We keep exploring new places until we again reach either a dead end or a place that already occurred along the path, at which point we backtrack until we reach a place where we have an alternative direction to explore. One of the advantages of depth first search is that I don't need to remember all of the nodes that I previously visited. I only need to remember the nodes along the path that I'm currently exploring and this was very important for Theseus because it helped him to find his way out of the labyrinth and back to Ariadne after he killed the Minotaur. And the other thing I have to remember is those directions which I previously explored but led to a dead end. So I don't have to remember all of these nodes, of which there could be thousands or millions in a large maze. I just need to remember that I tried to explore in this direction and it ultimately led to a dead end. So if I ever come back to Cryova, I know not to explore that path again and instead look for some other direction. So the advantage of depth first search is that it uses very little memory compared to breadth first or uniform cost search. The disadvantage is that it doesn't find the shortest path to the goal, it just finds any crazy path. And in some cases it may take a long time to find it. So breadth first search tends to be good in situations where short paths to the goal do exist, but there are very few of them. Depth first search tends to be good in situations where all paths to the goal are long, but there are many of them to choose from. Next we'll be looking at iterative deepening search, which has the same memory requirements as depth first search, but is complete and optimal like breadth-first search, thereby combining the advantages of both these algorithms.